Welcome to Privacy Cast, India's leading podcast of privacy. We today are going to talk about India's journey in privacy as well as going to talk about the breach notification protocols under DPDP Act of 2023 and the rules that just got passed recently on 2025. We have with us none other than Supratim Chakrabarti, India's leading privacy lawyer, has more than 16 years of experience, uh, a fellow colleague in advisory board in DPO Club, uh, has been doing implementing privacy across India as well as you know Middle East and US so today we're going to talk about without wasting any time let's talk about the breach notifications under DPDPA can you provide us a brief on what has changed what has stayed and what are these breach notifications that are we talking about Mr. Supratim over to you thank you thank you so much Akash very happy to be speaking with you all um, so I think uh what is uh, the further delineation that has happened on the breach reporting? It's like this. Of course, you'll have to go to the Data Protection Board. And we now know under the draft rules that you have to go two times, once immediately and one uh, once again within 72 hours uh, and give further details unless uh, the Data Protection Board allows you to come a little later. Also, you have to go to the individuals and provide details relating to the breach where they're impacted, of course. Uh, interestingly, one point, Akarsh, if you observed, the pointers that are mentioned in relation to 72 hours breach reporting, the last line item is the reporting that you have made to the individuals. So that effectively means that probably within 72 hours, they're expecting you to also go to the individuals and do a reporting. Very tricky situation because, you know, in a breach situation, your first thought process would be to contain the breach. And here we would be running from pillar to post to go to the data protection board once immediately, once within 72 hours, and before that to the individuals. And of course, we'll keep talking about other requirements like reporting to say cert in when there is a cyber incident and if a sector regulator is involved to them as well. So a lot of effort once there is a breach, as well as earlier, as you mentioned, certain. So when there is a security breach, certain has always been at the top, helping industries, you know, getting issues there registered, documented, so that. See, uh, what is the difference, right? So when you say certain reporting, sir, and then you compare a data protection board reporting, do you see there's a difference in terms of reporting, and as well as the template? or the features that have to get into get inside that? Or do you think it's a similar version that will go? Right, so very good question, Akash. I think a little bit of demystifying before I get into the core answer. Firstly, certain is re reporting is required when there is a cyber incident. And of course, the, the penumbra is quite big and almost every cyber incident gets captured there. Uh, you report to Data Protection Board of India when any personal information is involved. So in most of the cases, probably it will be one and the same. You'll have to report to both of them. As far as the reporting format is concerned, I keep telling uh, to people that in the absence of the Data Protection Board of India right now, certain is the pseudo Data Protection Board of India. The questions that they are asking, the follow on questions are getting into great detail of if there is a breach, was there a personal information involved? What kind of personal information is involved? Was there a, a health related information, financial information, so on and so forth? Um, what I observe is largely the parameters are same. So probably a smart thing for clients to do would be create a single source of truth, right? Where you call out that, okay, this is what has happened. This is what we have done. This is what uh, maybe individuals are required to do, et cetera, and pick up from there in order to do the reporting. I'm just hoping that very soon, probably India should have a single portal where once any impacted entity reports, automatically at the back end, it can go to the relevant authorities, say to certain, to uh, data protection board, to the sector regulator, so on and so forth. How do you see a difference between, so we talked about certain, uh, but we also have SEBI, we also have RBI, right? So if an entity is regulated, let's take an example of a bank, right? So everything comes to them, right? They're regulated by SEBI, if they're on the stock exchange, uh, they're regulated by RBI, then they are regulated by certain, then they are regulated by data vision board. So, you know, like, don't you think that compliance, so I also recently heard that compliance burden uh, is becoming a big thing for organizations. And and obviously, I'm not here to say that it's a it's a wrong thing, right? I think today, in today's world, compliance is the basis 
of working, right? We are enablers. If you do these things, then you can do these things, right? Then you can do business. So I think also moving out from that perspective, how do you see four breach reportings or five reportings altogether? And is there an idea or is there a solution that you would also want to suggest to the listeners? See, uh, uh, I think you've you pointed it correctly. Of course, the burden is increasing and with the rules coming into effect in the form that we are observing right now, it could be two or three more things to do, right? Like I mentioned, you go to Data Protection Board two times, you go to the individuals, though certain has already been kind of doing a similar thing in the absence of the Data Protection Board. With sector regulators coming in, depending on what kind of incident has occurred, we see a lot more aggression in their questioning okay uh, sometimes it is not even an email communication it could be a phone call from the regulator asking questions etc and very pointed ones okay uh, we have and the turnaround time could be quite uh, you know rigorous faster uh, so the the advice would be that you know maybe you should create a playbook okay you know beforehand who does what otherwise what we have observed is maybe two or three people whether they are from legal or tech they are trying to do everything they are trying to look into the breach and reporting. And they're not talking to each other. <laughs> At times, yes. Uh, breach reporting, going to the regulator, going to individuals, trying to talk to PR folks, uh, you know, internal communication to employees. So I think the way to do it is slice and dice. Uh, have three stages. One is the pre-breach stage, which is like normal when life is good, basically. Prepare well at that time. During the breach, who does what? You know, uh, HR. Uh, someone would be speaking to employees, not you, not you as a legal head, things like those. Clearly called out roles, etc. And then the last one would be after. What are the learnings that we had? We should not repeat these things, etc. So I think that should be your usual plan and definitely have a playbook so that in a bad day, you are very well equipped to handle uh, these situations. Yeah, and thank you, Supratim, for giving your insights. It was amazing. I think this is something that we will take ahead uh, and learn from you and get going. I think, um, and that brings us to the end of session today. Thank you so much. Thanks.